So here it just gives us a little scenario. It's not enough just to say that we have faith or we believe. Yeah. We have to have some actions with it. Hmm. Then the rest of the verses give some more scenarios. But but I ask you, what is the definition of faith? Not not what it does or how people should have it or, or use it, but what does the word mean? Faith. What does the word mean? How do you define faith? Yeah, let me, let me give you a scriptural definition. And so now that will be in Hebrews chapter 11, I believe. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the assured expectation of things hoped for the evident demonstrated of realities, though not be, though not held. So with that, let me hide it. With that, uh, so that's it's basically believing something without evidence. Mm. That's, that's what that says. It says the evident demonstration. It's just like the evident demonstration, like um, for instance, resurrection. Right. I believe that Jesus Christ died, and I believe that he was resurrected on the third day, and that he's alive now, reigning as a king. But you you have no evidence to believe that. I do. I, I have evidence. I mean, you have... I have evidence. Yeah, but I, you, you have eyewitness testimonies, kind of. Yeah, I have that, and I have the evidence because this work that we're doing, Yeah. Jesus had foretold after he was resurrected, that this good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness, and then the end will come. There's practically no place on the face of the earth where you would not find Jehovah's Witnesses that's following Jesus' example like he did, went from door to door, city to city, village to village. We're, talk, we're all talking the same thing, that the theme of the Bible, God's kingdom, that's why Jesus came to earth to die for our sins and he's a part of this this government this messianic kingdom where he's the king um, and that's that's what's going to get mankind back to God's original purpose of having um, righteous meek people ones that's willing to to be humble and, and learn about God and his ways living forever on a clean spirit I serve Mm. But, and prior to that, and I, and I must say it, prior to that, I know prior to studying the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses, doing just what you, you're doing, investigating it to see where they was coming from. You know, I, I was reared in a Baptist um, household. I think that that's just a generation. All, all of my family, uh, Baptist. Uh, with the exception of my dad, he's, he's in uh, Hebrew yeah. religion. And I did from examining the Bible, and which we're all supposed to go by, or at least that's what, that's what my family went by the Bible. Um, my, my dad, he used more um, Hebrew translations. But then when I compare and, and look at how the framework of how Almighty God, um, from, from the nation of Israel down to the Christian congregation that was established, um, Jehovah's Witnesses are by, by far the only organized religion that is trying to follow uh, the, the framework of, of the Bible and do God's will. I understand what you mean, but but for, for the I mean what this is saying to me is assured expectation mm -hmm. for something that that has not not be held something that, that you can't you can't prove now why, why this this is contradictory because this says that every every animal the bible says that every animal living today was living you know the, the dawn of creation um i mean say say the, the um noah and the ark for instance and this directly opposes that. And, and what you're telling me is, I'm supposed to have faith and turn a blind eye to this evidence. See, no, but I, see, I, 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 I never, I never read that every animal today. It gives us a description of some of the animals, but I've never read in the Bible where Noah took cats and dogs. I mean, but, but well, so what you're trying to say is that evolution does not go against what the Bible is saying. What 
I'm saying that Evan asked for creation. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about the, the origins of life or how people, okay. I'm just talking about just evolution. Okay. One animal, say chickens, came from a reptile, and, you know, a, a reptile dinosaur. That's how we have chickens today. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Does that go against what the Bible says? Yes. It does? And that's what I'm saying is I have the evidence to prove that that happened. And am I supposed to just not take in this evidence? As you admitted, you know nothing about it, which means you, you turned a, a blind eye to it. Well, that, just like, okay, I'm a, I've am been growing a garden, I'd say, for the past five years. And I think I just finished my garden yesterday. Yeah. When I want okra, I use an okra seed, an okra plant. And I planted an assortment of green beans, wax beans. And that's that's what I'm that's what I want to get. Yeah. I, I did assortment of tomatoes, even though it's different types. That's just what I'm going to get. I'm not going to plant my tomatoes or beans or okra and expect to get some corn. But you're not again. Again, you you have a, a gross misunderstanding of okay, evolution. Okay. Help me out, please. That it's not how evolution works. Okay. You, of course, and that's what another thing with this book implies that is that. If evolution were to be true, we would have incomplete animals. That's, that's not true. This animal, it was a complete animal within itself. It, it was its own animal. If it had babies, that's what it would have. But, what's up? Throughout millions of years, they had to adapt it, it to started the environment. To, right, so it started to change. So maybe its environment, hair, would be a beneficial thing. So it would start to grow hair. But not, uh, not just in itself, like, it, it takes generations of million, over millions of years. Of course, okay, you take your garden, that's, that's a good example. Of course you're going to still <laughs> have peppers. Now, a banana like that right there, an everyday banana that you get out of Walmart, that's not growing in the wild. We humans have changed that fruit. What grows in the wild is about this big with a thick... Um, outer coating and it has seeds and it's not that sweet because this one survived in the wild now if you plant that seed you're not going to get this so that's something that we've created through artificial selection and that's artificial selection natural selection is selection within nature of animals trying to survive so if you plant a banana seed you're not going to get that that that's you know that that's what evolution is of course you're still going to get peppers when you plant peppers, but if you were to, you know, say you were to, you were to breed it with a, a spicy pepper and then you were to take its offspring and breed it with spicy peppers, eventually, over 50, 60, 200 generations, the pepper's going to be spicy. The, the physical makeup has changed. Okay, so I see what you're saying. Now, my question, what does that have to do with, with our salvation? Well, it, it doesn't have anything to do with it. But it's something that I recognize as being true. And when the, the, the source of the salvation is telling me it, it's not true, and I have evidence that it is true, I mean, naturally... No, I, I, I wouldn't say. I, I feel like... Why, why, why would you say the source of our salvation tells us it's not true? Because I feel like you're trying to play on, on both sides of the field. You're trying to say that, that the Bible doesn't say that evolution couldn't have happened, and then you're trying to say that, that why, why do you need to know about that, you know? And you're trying to, to, to play both, you know, both sides of the field. And I'm saying it's, this, is, this is saying that, that the, the facts of evolution are wrong, and it, it's, 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 it's wrong. And being that, that they directly misquoted people, it, I don't know. You know, it, it just raises my suspicions. Because I mean, statements in this book are, are flat out wrong. Okay. See, and I, mean, I think it's safe to say, again, what, what the what the authors of this publication was trying to do is not distract from the creator because is, is evolution is, is that a religion no absolutely not really. and, and see it's it's I can show you right here again that is being that evolution is a religion that's intentionally misconstruing the statement um, it's claimed that, that uh, 
This claim is false as the scientific theory of evolution does not say anything about the values or meanings. While some people may add on such con uh, constructs to, to the theory, in doing so they form a separate philosophy which should not reflect on the theory itself. Evolution has nothing to do with religion. Now, the difference between religion is you have to have faith. So you have to, to, to have a, a complete assertion, exception of something, as this defined, without the evidence, as this said. That's, that's my definition of faith, believing something without evidence. Now, that's what qualifies as a religion. Now, see, evolution is believing something by demonstrable facts. Therefore, it has nothing to do with religion. It's, it's completely different. Completely different. And, and ev religion takes an act of faith. There is no act of faith with evolution. As common day biologists define evolution. So now, do, do evolution do that then? Do it we'll take away or I, I, don't acknowledge your creator? I, I don't see why it should because, uh, you know, like I was saying earlier, belief in evolution doesn't mean that life spontaneously was created on, on this earth. It's just why we have the diversity. And, and Darwin is clear. I, I have this book right there. I, I haven't read all the way through it, but I read about half of it. He's clear. I mean, Darwin himself doesn't doesn't deny that, that a God is possible. All he, he is is explaining the diversity of species. Now, no, that's not to say that I believe in evolution, that I believe life spontaneously, because honestly, I, I don't really think life spontaneously originated on Earth. I think it's a greater possibility that it came from somewhere else in the galaxy, or a different galaxy, or, or whatever. Because, I mean, take mushroom spores. They can survive the cold temperatures and, and the vacuum of space. You know, I mean, so so there, there's evidence. That's not to say we came from mushrooms, but there's evidence that, that it could have happened another way. Now, life spontaneously being created, asteroid, that's it, it, all just speculations. And, and you get nowhere by tearing down a speculation. You know, really, they're they're not they're not asserting that as facts. So there, there's no scientist today asserting spontaneous uh, life generation as fact. There's nobody doing that. It's just a, a theory. <laughs> um, and, and see, this, this defines natural selection. So you can have a, is everything you need to know about natural selection. Um, that, that way you, you could at least have a better idea of, uh, of what you're, you're talking about, you know. Because, to, you know, for me, as I've grown up as a, as a man, you know, for me to, to, to deny something, for me to assert that something is true or is it not, or if it's not true, I have to see the facts for myself. I can't go by what what you know somebody has told me, or you know, I, I've got to actually see it for myself. I mean, one thing that I can see intentionally that this book did do is, um, I think, right here. It, it says uh, that the origin of species, the book, doesn't explain speciesation. Now that's that's something that they, they intentionally misconstrued because it does have a big section on speciesation. They would have known that if they had just picked up the book and read it. <coughs>